In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Octave. Octave is a numerical analysis package similar to MATLAB and we'll be using it for our signals and systems simulations. Um, to install Octave on Linux, uh, you just go to your package manager. I'm using Fedora and this is the Fedora package manager. You can also use yum on the command line or in Ubuntu you can use apt or synaptic or the, uh, the Ubuntu package manager, the software center. Okay, so you search for Octave and this highlighted item is the default octave package this is the main package I, you can also see additional packages packages here like audio communications control systems and so on so i would suggest installing these as well because we might find it use find them useful later on and they are not really very big I mean 1 mb or maximum 10 mb so documentation is of course very important so install that as well <coughs> excuse me so install that as well and on Windows, uh, you search. You just go to Google and search for um, Octave Forge, Octave Forge, and uh, search. Uh, there they have some Windows binaries. Um, they are in the form of uh, tar packages, tar packages. You need to extract them to any folder you like. And to start Octave in Windows, you navigate to the folder where you've extracted those files. Within the within that folder, you will find a folder called bin, b-i-n. And within that folder you will find a file a program called octave.exe double click that and you will be in octave on linux you just go to the terminal and you type octave okay and you're in octave uh, you might also find have a menu you might also have a menu shortcut somewhere in your depending on your distribution all right so the first thing we'd like to know is how to get help and getting help is quite simple you just type help and follow that that's followed by the name of the function so Suppose we want to know about plot. Plot is a very important function. We will be using it again and again to obviously to plot graphs. Okay, that's what the name suggests. And you hit the enter key and you will see a lot of help. So it will tell you what are the kind of arguments you have. It will explain what of these arguments are. Okay. And so on. So that is plot. Since we are in signals and systems, um, to define a signal, we first need to define the x-axis, the the independent the the independent variable, right? So, to do that, we know that the independent variable, the time variable in the continuous time case is t, and in the discrete time case it is n, right? <coughs> um, be, since um, since we are in since we are in since we in, in octave octave does not support uh, we can't really do continuous time simulations in octave um, octave can work only with numbers and so we are limited by some precision however uh, continuous time signals are ideally supposed to have infinite precision so you can go you can use any number of digits after the decimal as you as you please that's not possible in octave so what we do is um, in order to fool ourselves into using s continuous into doing continuous simulations we use we limit our precision so this is similar to like this is similar to 6002x where we decided to be in let's say the eecs playground so it's quite similar we 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 restrict our precision we say let's for example we may want a precision of only 0 0.001 so only three digits after the decimal right and that way we somewhat work with continuous signals this is not really continuous if you really want continuous you should use a new you should use a symbolic package like sage math maxima mathematica etc <coughs> maple okay so let's define time so let's say we want time from 0 to 1 okay and our precision is 0 0.001 right what this does is it creates an array and the variable for our array is obviously t and this array will contain values from 0 to 1 in steps of 0 0.001 okay as you can see the first first element in the array is 0 the next one is 0 0.001 0 0.002 0 0.003 and we will go all the way up to 1 which will be element 1001 right element number 1001 is 1 and if you want to access any particular element in the array we can do so by specifying the number in parentheses um, the elements are uh, one based that means the first the index is one based so that means the first element is one so that is zero the next element number two will be 0 0.001 and element number 1001 is obviously one <coughs> and that's the continuous time signal discrete time signal is quite 
straightforward. Suppose I want it from minus 10 to 10. Um, in the discrete time case, uh, our step is 1 and the default step in this format is 1. So we don't need to really specify 1 like we specified 0 0.001 that time. So this will this will specify, uh, this will define our discrete time times base, right? And I'll put a semicolon this time. The reason for this is um, we may not always want to see all of this output, right? So the semicolon will suppress, suppress this output. It will assign values to n, but we won't see what those values are. Okay, and if you want to see those values, you just say n, right? So this is our time base. Next, we look at um, defining a some simple signals. First, let's look at the square wave. Okay, square wave is quite uh, quite simple, and it it might be useful later on. So I'll say square underscore continuous is equal to square from two to pi to let's say ten. Okay, we want a 10 hertz continuous. Okay, let's let's reduce that to 5. Okay. So what this does is it defines a 5 hertz signal. Okay, so this is 2 pi f. It's like omega naught, if you remember. Yeah. Okay, so this is like omega naught and 0 0.5. Okay, 0 0.5 is our duty cycle. So this would uh, so 0 0.5 means 50% duty cycle. So it, the signal would be high for half the time, and the other half of the time period it would be low. And we will see what the signal looks like. So that's a square wave. Next, let us plot. Let's plot the square wave. And so the plot function works like this. The first argument is the horizontal axis. In this case, it is t. And the second function is the vertical axis. So square. Uh, select and middle click. Okay. And we can see a plot. This plot is not really useful in the sense that I mean it's not easy to see. We cannot really notice which is the high and which is the low. Okay, so what we can do is we can use another function called axis, which will which will redefine the axis. It will redefine the maximum and minimum of the axis. Let me just move this out of here. Okay, it will redefine the maximum and the minimum of the axis. So, so suppose we want x to vary from let's say zero. Let's just uh, keep it as okay. Let's just say minus one point one two. Let's say one. Okay, what was my maximum value? So x varies from minus 1.1 to 1.1, and let's also vary y from minus 1.1 to 1.1. Okay, now if you look at our figure, okay, if you look at our figure, okay, I really didn't need the minus 1.1 because it starts from zero. Anyway, if you look at our figure, we can see the peaks and the dips very clearly, and if we count one, two, three, four, five, this is a five hertz signal, right? So you can see there are five peaks and that's a square wave let's also do a discrete time case because okay so let's do a discrete time case so let's say square underscore discrete and this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to define a square wave of a discrete time square wave of period of period let's say um, of eight eight samples per period right so two start by star n divided by 8 okay and let's keep it as a 50 percent duty cycle again and that's a square wave to plot the function we won't be using plot we'll use another function called stem okay and we will see what this is the format is quite similar the first argument is the horizontal axis the second argument is our vertical axis okay and if you look at stem it looks like this this looks exactly like how a discrete time signals graph is right so this is how we represent a discrete time signal and that's what the square wave does that that's what the stem stem plot does all right before moving forward we might want to plot multiple signals on the same on the same axis so suppose i have this uh, square continuous right suppose i had this square and let's say i wanted another square wave let's call this square continuous 2 and i wanted this to be 10 hertz or duty cycle of let's say 0.4 and let's say we wanted an amplitude of 2 okay and let's say I wanted to plot this function and this function on the same graph what we do is first let me close all so th this command close all okay. sorry for mixing things up close all will close all these waveform windows all these figures right so I'm just going to close all figures and you can see there are no figures now okay so what I'm going to do is plot first we'll plot the first function which we plotted before right so this was the first function okay 
and this is this is the usual function so next I'm going to use a command called hold on right? what hold on does is it uses the same figure to plot such subsequent to plot subsequent graphs right now let's plot the second function so okay and so and just so that I don't mix up the two two signals let me use a different color so R in quotes stands for red I think this is single quotes yeah so R stands for red and I'm going to plot red plot this in red so you can see this is double the frequency and double the amplitude okay and we've had we're plotting both on the same graph suppose we want to plot a new function on a separate graph what I just say is hold off okay I just turn off the hold okay and now if I say I, it'll it'll plot it on a new graph. If you want a new figure altogether, if you want a completely new a new figure, so what I just say, I just type the word figure, okay, and it'll create an it'll create a figure two, okay. So I have now have two figures, right? And I will plot the original uh, original graph on this figure. So this is figure one, figure two. You can see this side by side. If you want a specific number over here, you can see this is two, right? So if you want a specific number. I can specify that so if I want figure number 100 okay so you can see this number is 100 okay so that's that's about figures let's move on to another to another uh, another function called a sawtooth function this is another function which is not so square and sawtooth are not there in the default uh, octave package mm, it's part of one of the add-ons I told you to install I don't remember which one so let's just say saw underscore continuous you start by star t and let's say the frequency is 3 hertz okay and let's use a uniform so this will be a symmetric so 0.5 is like a half duty cycle this will be a symmetric symmetric triangular wave right okay and let's plot it So saw underscore continuous, and this is a continuous. Um, so this is a sawtooth wave, right? All right. Let's move on to some uh, to a more impo much more important signal, and that's the exponential signal, right? So the exponential signal, the command. Okay. So before that, let me just clear the command window, and there is a simple simple command for that called CLC. CLC is like clear okay it's like clear in your terminal in your Linux terminal or CLS in DOS so if I say CLC it will clear all my it will give me a fresh new screen okay so let's continue so to define exp uh, to define exponential signals we use the function exp right and we can specify time over here okay and if I just plot this plot t comma oops I forgot to uh, assign a value over here so let's say x is equal to XP. so I say plot t comma x right and you can see an exponential a rising exponential so let's let's plot a continuous time decaying exponential like a like the discharge of a capacitor right so decaying okay so let's call this capacitor discharge okay and <coughs> So this, let's say, the initial value of the initial voltage is five, and I'm going to let this discharge pretty slowly. So my time constant is 0 0.1. Oh, so let's say time constant is one, 10, 1 by 10 rather, <coughs> very small time constant, and t. We'll put a minus sign because it is uh, decaying a uh, discharging capacitor. And let's say plot t comma cap underscore discharge. Okay, so this is like a discharge. This is like a decaying capacitor, discharging capacitor, which we studied in 6002x. So this is a decaying exponential. Very important. Let's uh, plot a discrete um, rising exponential, like a capacitor charging. So let's say rising under exp discrete. Okay, and let's say this is five into <coughs> exp n by let's say 10 okay um, will this be fine 
I'm not sure. Let's just see. Let's just see if this will if this will give me tiny values or if this will give me the good values. I'm not sure about this. So rise underscore exp underscore discrete. Okay. Oops. Oh, I forgot to put the comma. Okay. What does this look like? Great. So this is our rising exponential. Okay. And this is a discrete time signal. All right. So an even more important important signal is the sinusoid and the sinusoid is very simple you just have sine function and the cos function so i'm going to demonstrate the sine function for the continuous time case and the cos function for the discrete time case all right so the sine function is like omega naught into t plus some some uh, phase 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 shift right and we might have an amplitude okay so let's just define our sinusoid. So sinusoid score continuous okay, is equal to let's say the amplitude is 10 and sine of let's have a, a frequency of again 10 hertz okay, and let's have a shift of let's say 2 okay, 2 radians of phase shift okay and let's plot this function so plot t comma sine okay and this is my sinusoid all right um, let's do the let's do the cos function for the discrete time case so i'm going to call this so let's say this is two um, let's call this Two star pi by star n by let's say twelve. Okay, how about that be our angular frequency? Okay, and let's just not let's forget about the let's forget about the phase for now. Let me use a let me use an amplitude of let's say three. Okay, and that's my discrete sinusoid, and I say stem n comma sinusoid underscore discrete all right and that's my stem plot and you can see this is a discrete sinusoid we can go one step ahead and use exponentially <coughs> exponentially decaying or exponentially rising uh, rising sinusoids and it's quite simple um, um, but we'll we'll look at a new operator over here so logically we would say exp something into stem something what you'll have to understand is uh, is uh, matlab and octave all work on matrices so the matrices so the the arrays which you saw are actually either column vectors or row vectors and we know that we can only multiply a column vector and a row vector we can't multiply two column vectors whatever we've done so far will actually define column vectors and you can't multiply them so what we do is we use a dot star so a dot star basically converts uh, converts the column vector one of the column vectors into row vector into a row vector and it multiplies and it multiplies both of them right so let's say we want a decaying exponential minus 5 star t and we have um, a frequency of 2 pi let's say we have 20 hertz to time okay and let's just call this sine exp all right and oops sorry my fault this should have been sine okay this is sine exp and let's plot sine exp and you can see this is our decaying exponential right quite cool so that's the basics of that's the basics of matlab i would encourage you to try more functions yourself um, use help use um, just search just do a google search you have many other useful functions you can find the length you can find the length of of the of an array of, of a vector oops i forgot shouldn't have put the semicolon you have for loops you have if statements you can you can actually write a whole whole program so explore this yourself we will s we will obviously see more more uh, constructs as we move on and i hope this can get you started